ain't you tired of being at the bottom? Our whole lives we done been on the bottom. When do we get to live a good life? When do we get to live a, 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 a life of no pain, a life of pleasure, a life of righteousness? Why do we always have to struggle and go through the things that we're going through? Is this our plight forever on earth? Or is there something good for a black man and a woman here in America? In another city to hey, what's the biggest thing going on in the news right now? Cops killing who? Who, who, who was just killed? A black man named Terry Nichols. Terry Nichols. And guess who? Guess who put him to death this time? Black people did. Five of your brothers just put one of your brothers to death. Right. Where did they learn that behavior from? They learned that behavior in slavery. They learn their behavior from the so-called white man because of how they've treated us and what they've done to us for so many years. Well, they ain't gonna worry about it. They ain't out here. And if they was, we, <laughs> and if they was, we, we, we don't care. You know why? Because our brothers, our sisters got to get this true. The Bible prophesizes that we would be in a land that is not ours for over 400 years, and then the information would be brought to us that we are the real children of Israel, that we're not black, that we're not Hispanic, that we're not Native American. That, uh, 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 the, the African history that they're trying to teach to us and perpetuate through our, to, to us through our society, that's not our true history. Our true history is written right here in the Bible. But the atrocities that we will go through will be written right here too. Verse 17, read. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 17. And I will set my face against you. So the first thing we got to understand is that the brother just told you, to he said that you are what? Israelites from what tribe? What tribe are you from? Look at the sign. What tribe are you from? Huh? Right here. You will be from what? The tribe of Judah. Judah is the American blacks who came here on them slave boats that docked right there in Charleston, South Carolina. That's your true tribe. That's your true nationality. You're African American? Ain't no such thing as African American. You're Judah. You're the real Jews. That's who you are. That's why they was on Kanye. This is why they was on Kyrie Irving, because they don't want Butch, Brandy, and what's your name, what? And P, to know that you God's chosen people. You're the Israelites. So, read this again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 17. And I will set my voice, I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemy. Why did God say he would set his face against us, Butch? Why did God turn his back on us? We wasn't doing right. What were we supposed to be doing, Brandy? Walking in, walking after his commandments, right? Hold that. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. Because what you're going to learn is we're still God's chosen people. If not, we would have died in slavery. When they did this to us, if we, if God did not love us, this right here, we would not have survived. No other nation could have survived this. If we had done this to them, they wouldn't exist on the earth right now. You do realize that, right? They could, not, they could not withstand what we withstood. Why? Because there's something within you, Brandy. There's something in you, Butch and Peter, that's not in them. That's why you're standing right here today, because the word of God is resonating with you. Right. But you are right. We did not do what God commanded us to do, which was his commandments. Listen to this, Pete. Look at this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 12. Yep. And now, Israel. Israel, are you on this side? Pete, where you see yourself at? You, are you from Judah too? 
Oh, you asked me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. You will be from the tribe of Judah too. Yeah. You, yeah. You're an Israelite. Yeah. All of you. What's your father? Is he a so-called black man? Right, so the Bible tells us we are what our father is. Right. So if your father is a so-called black man, Brandy, you're, you, you are an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. If your father is a so-called black man, you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Now God says what? What does the Lord thy God require of thee? What does God require of his chosen people? Because he gave you the earth. He put rulership and power in your hand, black man. He gave that to you to rule the earth. And he gave you a woman to rule right beside you, to be a helpmate to you. But our kids today, they don't know that. Our people today don't know that. We are lost here in America, and it's going to take brothers to come to the streets to teach our people and wake our people up. Because these Arabs that are taking our money every day, they ain't, they don't care nothing about you know who you are. They want you to stay the way you are so they can stay getting that money and stay living in the riches of this world while we stay on the bottom. Ain't you tired of being at the bottom? Our whole lives, we done been on the bottom. When do we get to live a good life? When do we get to live a, 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 a life of no pain, a life of pleasure, a life of righteousness? Why do we always have to struggle and go through the things that we're going through? Is this our plight forever on earth? Bring it out. Or is there something good for a black man and a woman here in America? What you're going to find out if you stay long enough, there is something good for you. But it's not here in America. It's in your homeland in Jerusalem that God is going to send us back to if we keep the commandments. Read it again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? God is saying, what does he require of you? You want that good life that I promised you? You want that rulership and that power that I took away from you? What does he require of you? Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. Our people don't fear God. There's no fear of God in our people anymore. We lost that. We lost that. We don't know how to find that. We're here to restore that today. You must have fear of God, meaning you understand what God says to do and not to do. He says, don't do this. You, Brandy, Butch, Pete, you're supposed to say, all right, God said, don't do this. I ain't doing it because of the judgment that I'm going to get behind it. If I do this thing, God is going to judge me. That's the fear of God. I fear God, so guess what? Today is the Sabbath day. I'm going to keep the Sabbath. I'm not buying. I'm not selling, cooking, cleaning, working, none of that. God said, don't do it. If we had done it before, we would be in rulership. So he says to fear the Lord thy God. Come on. To walk in all his way. Some of his ways. To walk in all his way. Now, our people like to say, well, the old, the, the Bible, the, the laws are done away with. Well, Butch, if I shot Brandy right now, is God going to judge me? Yeah, he's going to judge me. I'm going to get mine, ain't it? But that's in the Old Testament. So is that law done away with? No, it's not done away with. So when you hear people say the laws are done away with, that means we should have a lawless society. Murder should be, there should be no problem with murder. There should be no problem with rape. Right. There should be no problem with adultery right. or fornication. Right. But there it is a problem with it because God says so. Those laws can't be done away with because there would be no more uh, 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 statues between us. It'd be complete chaos, Butch. Out. He says, what? Well, read that again. To walk in all his ways and to love him. To do what? And to love him. God said we lost love for him. You know how we lost the love for him? We started following after the ways of the heathen. This is where, this right here made us lose all love for our God. Where is that? What in, where is this? Oh, here we go. This right here. Yeah. This made us lost all made us lose all love for our God. Because it's this God. No. It's this God. No. How you know? Yeah, so, so that would be a better depiction of God, right? Now I'm gonna show you something. Come here, come here, kids. I want you to watch, watch this, Brandy. I know you gotta go somewhere, Butch. But I want y'all to watch, I want y'all to see this. Check this out, Brandy. I got a question, y'all man. What's your name? Huh? Rave? Rave. Who is this? Jesus. And who is this? Who is this right here? If this is Jesus, who is this? Don't know. Don't worry about it. Ain't nothing wrong with saying. I don't know. What about you, my sister? Who is this right here? That's Jesus. So who is that? So how is that Jesus and that's God? He's supposed to look like, he said he looked like his father, right? So if this is Jesus, what does God look like? What does his father look like? 
What about you? You laughing? Why would you? It's your turn. Who is this right here? <laughs> so who is this? Who is this then? So what I'm showing you is, we have been taught that this is Jesus. Give me the book of Revelations. I'm going to show you something. Give me the book of Revelations. We're going to read it. I'm going to show you. This right here is a lie, my brother. Jesus looked like you. That's right. Feel your hair. Jesus got hair like you. That's right. This right here is the lie that they have told us, our children, and everybody on the earth. Watch what the Bible says. Read. 14. 14. Go straight to it. The book of the book of Revelation, chapter one, verse fourteen. His head and his hairs were white like wool. It says that Jesus Christ, the hair on his head and the hair on his face was white like wool. Does he have white hair? What about a white beard? That's strike one. Read on. As white as snow. It was fully white. Like my brother right here, beard. You see his beard? How he got a white beard? The top of his hair is going white. Come on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. fire. It said that Jesus Christ, his eyes were a flame of fire. When you look in them, in them eyes right there, yeah. what color are his eyes? Strike two. Come on. And his feet like unto fine bread. Hold on now. Look at that feet. Now I can see your ankles almost. See, I can see your ankles. I'm sure your ankles are the same color as the rest of your foot. Am I right? So it said Christ's feet was what? And his feet like unto fine bread. What color is brass? Brass. Brown like a penny. Brass is brown like a penny. Like her ankles. Like her ankles. Like her foot. Like her legs. Like her arm. Like her face. It said his feet like unto fine brass. Come on. As if they burned in a furnace. It said it, the, the brass looked like it was burned in a furnace. So if you burn something, what color does it turn? What color? Black. So if the color of Jesus in the Bible, it says he's black, who is this? Bring it out. This is the lie that they taught you, young brother. This is the lie that they taught your mother, that they taught your father, that they taught Brandy, that they taught all of us. Because the Bible says Jesus Christ is a black man according to the Bible. That's right. This is what you must know. Now, this your, who is this to you? That's your nephew? What's up, nephew? Now, who's going to teach nephew that Jesus Christ is a black man? You going to do that? Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. TV. Download the app today. Shalom. My familia is the 12. Look at this sign. What is your nationality right here? What is it? What will be your nationality? See, on this side is your true nationality. On this side is what they call us in America today. Who would you be? Who are you? I can almost tell who you are. You Judah. Right. What about you, young man? Judah. You would be a so-called black man. That's what this world will call you. This world will call you, sister, a so-called black woman. Right? But is there such thing as a black woman? Is there? What color my boots? You, know, you, see, you see women walk around looking like that? Humans walk around looking like that? What about white men? Do you see white men around here? What color is her shirt? I'm a Christian. I believe in God. <laughs> her shirt is white? Oh, help the sister up. Don't just look. Help the sister up. Right, right. This is the. So, her shirt is white, right? So when we say white man, is there such thing as a white man walking the earth? No. Everybody on this earth has a nationality. We have nation. We come from a nation of people. The, the, what makes us special is that God chose us out of all nations on the earth. Give me Deuteronomy chapter seven and verse six. Let me show you something. God chose you. And this young nephew of yours, out of all people on the earth, 
the, the problem is nobody is teaching us that. Nobody is teaching this young man that you are God. You like you play video games? You like the hero in the games? You like the hero, right? You the hero. You the same hero that you be playing that you be playing on that game. That's you. God made you like that. You are God on this earth. But someone has to teach you that so that you can learn how to be a God. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. God called us a holy people. Now, who is he talking to? He's talking to the children of Israel. This Bible is not written to the whole world. This Bible was written to a specific people during a specific time on the earth. It was written to the Israelites. That's but from the beginning of the book until the end of the book, the Bible is dealing with a group of people that God chose who are known as the children of Israel. They kept breaking God's commandments over and over and over. That's us today. We break God's commandments still to this day. What we're doing is trying to restore our neighborhoods, restore our young men and women so that they understand that you're God's chosen people. Right. That the kingdom of heaven belongs to you if you do what God says. God said what? For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Now what that means is God, out of all of the people on the earth, he looked at us and he said, them right, that's going to be my special people. They're going to be the people that I choose right there. I choose them. He chose us, but guess what we did? Guess what we did? God chose us, but guess what we did to God? Bring it out. We turned our back. We, we turned our back on the most high God. Our forefathers did. Because did you come over here on a slave ship? Did you? Did you come to this country on a slave ship? Let me show you. Did you go through this right here? Are you going through this today, young man? What about you sisters? Are y'all going through this today? What's this called? You didn't go through this, right? Did your mother go through it? What about her mother? What about her mother? What about her mother? Yeah. And then what about her mother? Or, or your father? And your great-great-great-grandfathers? That's who went through this. But what? Are you a slave today? No? Why? Why do you think? Why don't you think you're a slave today? Because, huh? Because your ancestors got free? I'm gonna show you that you're not a slave, yet you are a slave today. We're still slaves right now. Who runs this store right here? You don't know. Uh, it ain't your people, ain't it? Your people don't own that store. What about this one back over here? They don't own the store, right? Who works in the store? What kind of people work in the store? Black people work in the store. So here we go. We don't own the stores, but we work in the stores. We are God on the earth. Didn't I just tell you that? Does a God have to work? You are God. God means you rules. Give me the definition of God. Look it up real quick. You are God. While, while he looks for the definition, I want to show you something. Give me Psalms chapter 82 and verse 6. I'm going to show the young man that he's a God. What you have in your presence, what you have in your arms, sister, is a God. You're holding a God in your arms, and you have no idea. Read what you got. The book of Psalms chapter 82 verse 6. I have said, ye are God. Read it again. The book of Psalms chapter 82 verse 6. I have said, ye are God. God is telling us, this is the book of, the, of our Lord. He says, I have said, ye are gods, talking to the men, the so-called black men. When a dog have, a, have babies, what does it have, cats? What does it have? A dog have babies, it have what? And they're considered what when they get older? Bigger dogs. When a, when a, when a cat has uh, babies, what does it have, tigers? They have little kittens, right? So if you are the son of God, if you are the daughter of God, what does that make you? Bring it up. The son of God. You're a God, brother. Read it again. The book of Psalms, chapter 82, verse 6. Come on. I have said, ye are God. You are God, young man. Come on. And all of you are the children of the Most High. Come on. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Come on. Arise, O God, 
Judge the earth. God said, rise up. Judge the earth. That's what you're supposed to do. You were brought into existence through your mother to learn that you're an Israelite, that you're a God, and that you must rule this earth. That is our plight. That's right. That is what we're sent here for. But you know what? They're not going to teach you this in school. They're not going to teach you in the many churches that are around here. You go there, you get a shuck in a job, a hand clap, and you go right on about your day forgetting the message that God gave us, the what? true gospel, which is that God is going to redeem us out of this captivity we are in. We are still slaves today. That's why you said that, no, we don't own these stores, but we work in them, just like we had to work during this time. There wasn't stores then. What did we work in then? What were, what were we working then? In the what? In the field. In the fields. So now today you say, I'm free. I work in no field no more. But now when you get a job, what does it, when you're applying for a job, it asks you for your previous experience in the in, in a specific blank of work. What is it called? Field. Field. They say, what field of work have you done before? Oh, I worked at Walmart. I did customer service. What field of work are you applying for? You're still working in the field. It's just that these fields now don't look, they're not cotton fields. They're not cucumber fields. The ABC stores, the Exxon's, the uh, Circle K's. This is where we're at now. Everything has changed. It's become modern. And it confused us to make us think that we are not slaves. But we are slaves. Can you just jump on a plane and go to Israel? What do you need? A passport. But a God, he don't need a passport if he was free. Right. He could travel and go where he want to go. Where's that definition? Give me that definition of the word God. How you doing, brother? Read that definition. Definition of the word God. This is the definition for the word God. The supreme or ultimate reality. It says a God is the supreme or ultimate reality. Read. Such as the being perfect in power, wisdom, and goodness. That's what you're supposed to be. A man of power, wisdom, and goodness. Right. You understand? That's what we're supposed to be, brother. Right. But here in this country, yeah. that's, that's not who we are. Right. We have been degraded by every means. They call us thugs, gangsters, hoodlums. They just murdered our brother in Memphis, Tennessee. Right. Five brothers just killed their own brother in Memphis, Tennessee. Because we have been taught that we are less than a God. Because we have not been taught by the words of God. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.